Okay, and we're live. Um, welcome to the Finance Magnets podcast. Uh, I'm Michael Pearl, and with me here in our Tel Aviv offices is Koji Higashi from Japan. Koji is a cryptocurrency expert um, uh, with regards to the Japanese industry and not only, right? Right. Uh, Koji has a blog and provides with um, provides uh, his readers with uh, various uh, services, research, research services and consultancy services, right? If I understand that, correctly. That as well, yeah. Research, uh, education, yeah. So say a few words about yourself, where you're coming from. Sure. Um, maybe how old are you? What do you how do? old am I? Okay, <laughs> yeah. sure, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for inviting me on. Um, my name is Koji Higashi. Uh, as, as you know, Michael introduced me, um, I'm like a full stack Bitcoiner, right? I do kind of many things in the industry, but um, mostly like content creation, like writing or creating videos. Um, I've been involved in different projects in the space before. Um, yeah, I've been active since, I've been active in the cryptocurrency space since 2014. Um, one of the... That's quite early. <laughs> uh, at least for Japanese people, yes, because when I started right after the Mt. Gox incident, yeah. um, you know, the reputation of Bitcoin... For the sake of the people that don't know what is this oh, incident? Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Mt. Gox incident, it's very infamous in the industry, but uh, basically... Uh, Mt. Gox, uh, the, the world's biggest Bitcoin exchange at the time, mm -hmm. which was based in Japan, Tokyo, Japan. Um, well, it got, you know, the <laughs> truth is still like nobody knows yeah. yet. Uh, but there, uh, There's some lawsuits going on right lawsuits, now, Lawsuits, right. right. Uh, allegedly, they, you know, lost a bunch of Bitcoins due to a hack or, you know, embezzlement. Uh, nobody knows yet. Mm -hmm. uh, they are still kind of fighting over it. But basically, the exchange lost a bunch of bitcoins. Like, uh, at the current rate, it's just a, a large amount of money, basically. Yeah. And yeah, and then everybody thought this bitcoin thing is very sketchy and like you know it's very dangerous or something in Japan after the hack incident. Mm -hmm. So yeah, after that, uh, I started kind of getting so interested. So, in so that bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general started from the wrong foot, right, in Japan. Basically, like from very negative, right? Because yeah. when I started, when I tell my friends, like, oh my, I'm so excited about this uh, new technology, Bitcoin blockchain, you know, it's very cool. People would think, like, oh, this person's kind of crazy, or, you know, uh, I thought the CEO was arrested <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. There was, yeah, a lot of misconception, you know, misinformation, fear. Yeah. So that's when I started in Japan. But, and when you say you started, uh, were you um, one of the early adopters in, in terms of buying Bitcoins or just started uh, being interested in it? Oh, uh, I bought some Bitcoins at the time as well because I mm -hmm. thought, you know, that was a very beautiful like design, like architecture. And, you know, I was fascinated by it. And I thought this current like fiat system, like yeah. fiat money was kind of, I, I don't know, I felt uh, cryptocurrency was more compelling so yeah. I basically sold a lot of my fiat and bought into Bitcoin so but after that actually the price of Bitcoin crashed yeah. to like 200 US dollar level right yeah so I don't know if that was a very good wise you know investment decision but anyways but now I think now in, right <laughs> in retrospective it, it, it was right. a good idea right, right? Yeah, and you huddle now, right? If I if I may ask, right? If I basically huddle, yeah, that's the best investment strategy because I'm not a good trader myself. Yeah. So yeah. What's your like again? If if I can ask you like you know just a philosophical question like mm -hmm. when when will you stop huddling like? Uh, that's a good question. I'm probably not gonna sell my bitcoins for fiat like yen, mm -hmm. but uh. I probably hold it until I can use my bitcoins for daily, you know, purchases or mm -hmm. you know, until I can actually use it. Right now, uh, we might touch on Bitcoin Cash and others, but right now it's kind of difficult to use Bitcoin. Still, yeah. we're gonna talk about it real right soon. Even though Japan kind of leads the way, right, in terms of uh, implementing Bitcoin, oh, in terms right. of using it, uh, Bitcoin payment, and yeah. yeah, there's a lot of retail stores that accept Bitcoin now. 
but still, yeah, like transaction fee, the wait time, the, there's still a lot of room for improvement in terms yeah. of yeah technology. So is it like only big corporations or I don't know, like your local grocer that, that is uh, kind of innovative and wants to uh, take bitcoins? Can you do that? Like, uh, is, is it something that is common? So right now, there's a lot of interest from corporations, even bigger companies, right? So like DMM, uh, yeah. famous for Forex as well, they accept Bitcoin for digital content purchases. They've been doing that for close to two years now. So they started kind of early. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a definitely growing interest. You know, big camera, it's like one of the biggest um, uh, electronics stores, department stores kind of thing in Japan. It's very famous. Yeah. And they accept Bitcoin as well. So that, that was very big news, actually. So you can, you know, if you go to Japan, for example, you want to buy some gadgets, laptops or whatever. You can do it with you can, you can, yeah, you can use Bitcoin to and do that. And how does it go in terms of the exchange rate? They just, they just check the exchange rate at, at, at the same moment, like uh, the same same way I would do with dollars? Or um, do they have like a daily rate because the, the volatility is quite crazy? Right, they have, so yeah, the vo volatility is crazy, so they have, they change the rate very frequently. I, I don't honestly know exactly how they do that, but so usually what happens is, so you say like, hey, I want to pay with Bitcoin and like the uh, they say like okay sure and like they show the QR code right but there's a timeout limit so if you don't use the QR code after like three minutes or something mm -hmm. they just show you a new rate because it's so volatile crazy right yeah. so yeah there's like a three minute window and how you basically. how do you do a refund with Bitcoin right yeah, that's mm -hmm. a very interesting question so let's say you buy a camera for example and you don't like it and you return it so they actually give you a refund in yen Mm -hmm. So they lock in the rate and they convert the Bitcoin uh, to yen immediately. And yeah. if you want to return the product, uh, they pay you back in yen, not in Bitcoin, because the volatility is so crazy. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense to you know pay back in Bitcoin. So recently there were some interesting news coming from Japan, uh, GMO mm -hmm. uh, Internet, not GMO, uh, the uh, Forex company, which is the same group, right? Mm. Right. Uh, they started paying. They offered their employees to 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 be paid in uh, Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the biggest car dealerships. Remind me the name um, in Japan. I don't remember, but yeah, I know. Like I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it offered um, to 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 receive bitcoins for for, for actually for right. buying cars, for right. purchasing cars. Right. Uh, so it seems that it it's becoming a widespread phenomenon. Um, would you say that uh, the Japanese, you know, more traditional industry supports Bitcoin, believes in Bitcoin? Uh, it seems that way. Um, believe, yeah, I mean, some companies believe in Bitcoin long term and committed to it, right? Say, for example, GMO, they are not just doing an exchange. They are also entering mining competition yeah so that's a big commitment yeah yesterday and, they, they announced right. it yeah right uh and they have their own chips they say and so that that's a very very big commitment i would say so they have to be kind of very serious and believe in the technology mm -hmm. but for others for other companies i cannot really speak for all of them but um it's mostly for marketing in a way mm -hmm. nowadays it's kind of uh, catchy to say like oh yeah we're doing this bitcoin thing right you you mean that the amount of people that are actually gonna ask to be paid in bitcoins is not going to be that high right um so technically you can use bitcoin uh at big camera and other retailers buy cars or whatever but it doesn't really mean there's a lot of people who actually do that you know it's not like people are flocking to the car dealership and buying cars with bitcoin yeah yeah i believe uh, what about other implementations? Like I know that in the States you can use your Bitcoins for I IRA, 401k, you mm. know, the pension funds or, right. or other um, you know, investment funds. Right. Um, how is Japan in that uh, regard? Huh, that's an interesting question and I don't know too much about it, meaning probably there's not much going on. Mm -hmm. It's mostly for retail purchases in Japan. But it, yeah. Okay. 
Um, so, you know what, let's start from the beginning. Can you um, give me like a glimpse on the Japanese um, crypto market? Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people see it from, from the outside. They don't really understand who is against who and how does it work? Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, in terms of the exchanges, mm -hmm. right? The exchanges are probably the most dominant uh, institutions in the crypto sphere right now. You That's know, true. Yeah. Provide you with the liquidity that right. the money goes through them. How does it work? Japan has some 15 exchanges, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. Um, yeah, 15, but... Uh, out of the 15, there are only like several exchanges that matter. Others are very small and not many people use them. So what are the, the main exchanges in your... Uh, Bitflyer, they have the biggest uh, volume in the world actually, Bitcoin trading volume. Uh, Coincheck, they have the, they are the, probably the most popular in terms of the number of users. Mm -hmm. um, Zaif, Z A. IF. Um, Zyf is also another kind of popular exchange. Mm -hmm. They are also working on private blockchain and some other kind of like ICO platform and you know it's kind of they're kind of unique in a way. Others are Bitbank. Mm -hmm. Bitbank is mostly for serious traders. Um, BTC Box and there is now GMO and DMM uh, entering the market but those are basically the big ones, I would say, mm -hmm. if I'm not missing anything. Any banks that own exchanges? Like um, um, uh, like two weeks ago, Bank right. of America has uh, filed in for a license mm. uh, to, to run an exchange in the States. Right. Uh, how does it work in Japan? I don't know any banks who are you know, planning to do a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency exchange in Japan yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to happen eventually. SBI... SBI is, uh, SBI yeah, doing, is, doing is, is an also, exchange. It's also it's, a group that, that right. holds a, a, a large forex company, one of the largest. Right. Is, are they also a bank? Not sure, but I think eventually it'll happen. Right? Yeah. yeah. SBI is pretty committed to the crypto space as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and in terms of the other um, exchanges, um, what is the profile of, of these exchanges in terms of the, the founders? Is it like startup guys that um, mm. you know went into the crypto hype uh, on time, like like it, it happened in you know in other locations in Europe or in the states? Mm -hmm. uh, their profiles, people behind exchanges, um, the exchanges who started early uh, are kind of the bigger ones now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they were just startups, right? Mostly those people are like kind of like myself in a way. People who got excited about the technology saw a lot of potential uh, in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. So, yeah, but it's slowly changing, right? Mm -hmm. Before, like say like in 2014, 15, it was all about Bitcoin. Like nothing else was kind of relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays, exchanges need to add a lot of altcoins because there's so much demand for altcoin trading or ICOs. So I feel like the industry is slowly changing, mm -hmm. especially after the regulation. It's getting more and more like a traditional finance sector in a way. Yeah, yeah more top down. Like and more institutional bodies right. entering the, the industry and, and right. pouring money into it and setting exactly. up companies. And, you know, big companies like GMO and DMM are also in the market, mm -hmm. in the race now. So, yeah, it's changing. The industry is changing very drastically now. Okay. Yeah. We're going to talk about altcoins in a second, but sure. before we proceed, um, a little bit more about the exchanges. What's the process? If you want to trade uh, cryptocurrencies now as a, as, a, as a person living in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, what should you prefer doing? I mean, would you, you know, search for something that is very common in Israel and in, in other parts of, of Europe? Is people just trading between themselves, you know, don't want to go through mm. the exchanges? From obvious reasons, right? right? For, because of fees and right. KYC processes right. and etc. So people just, uh, you know, find partners for trading mm -hmm. online or on Local WhatsApp, Bitcoin Telegram. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. And just meet and just, you know, transfer right. money. It's kind of obsolete, but people do it because, right. you know, they prefer it. Um, would you say that, that, that people in Japan prefer trading via uh, exchanges? Is it more accessible? Mm. Actually, I'm quite interested in how people trade or acquire cryptocurrencies in Israel, but in Japan, it's 
99.9% through exchanges, I would say. Yeah. So you can check out local Bitcoin stats, statistics, but nobody basically uses local exchange in Japan. It's quite interesting. Nobody uses local exchanges? Uh, local Bitcoin, sorry. Oh. So like face-to-face, you know, like meeting up and like, you know. Non-existent. Non-existent. I see. A lot of people feel kind of uncomfortable meeting yeah. kind of strangers and like, you know, hey, like I pay you in cash and like you give me Bitcoins kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's a cultural thing. I mean, some of it is cultural, I would say. And the other thing is people like to trade. People mm-hmm. don't really try to buy Bitcoin to hodl. People yeah. like to buy and trade. So that's why they use uh, exchanges, I would mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Like the, the rush of trading. Right, right. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, so in terms of the altcoins that we uh, mentioned just a second ago, uh, Japan is famous for quite a few, right? You have uh, Cardano, you have uh, Monocoin. Right. Monocoin, uh, yeah. What else? Uh, uh, like a Japanese Fuji, cryptocurrency? Uh, yeah. Fuji coin? <laughs> I don't know if Fuji coin still is alive, but <laughs> okay. maybe. Yeah. I mean, cryptocurrencies don't die. But <laughs> so for, for the sake of people that don't really know much about uh, Cardano or uh, Monocoin, right. which are probably the, the, the most significant uh, Japanese coins, can you elaborate a little bit? Sure. So starting off with Monocoin, it's basically a, a Japanese Dogecoin, right? You know, you guys know Dogecoin, like a meme-based cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be a joke in a way, mm-hmm. right? And it's similar. Uh, Monocoin is very similar in that sense. But the difference is the community is still very active. There is uh, There are some services you can actually use, for like tipping or buying uh, like online e-commerce, you know, yeah. you can buy stuff with Monocoin. It's kind of like a Monocoin's Amazon in a way. Yeah. So those services are still kind of... Monocoin is also successful outside of Japan, right? In, in the, kind of. In Singapore, if I'm not... Uh, not, sh- not sure, but I know there is some interest from outside Japan as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's mostly for Maybe, spe- uh, speculation. Ma- yeah, as, as an asset, not not uh, for for utility uses, right? Right. But in Japan, people actually use Monocoin for socializing and buying goods and services sometimes. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of interesting because people still use it. Maybe they use it more often than Bitcoin. So some <laughs> there are some very interesting examples or cases. So tipping is very common for mm-hmm. monocoin users mm-hmm. through on Twitter. So there are like several or a few to whom to, to, to each other. To, each other. Okay. So like I say something like kind of fun or funny or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh that's that's funny. Like I tip you monocoin on wow. Twitter or something. And how do you do that like like practically? Um you, you know change tip? No. Uh, it's basically so you say like at say Koji Higashi. Yeah. Uh, tip tip at Koji Higashi one mona or something, and like Twitter command, and yeah. the, there's a Twitter bot called Tip Mona, mm-hmm. and they just catch the message and like uh, basically you know give me the mona coin and I can withdraw if I want to. Nice. So nice. how much is it worth now the mona coin? I don't know, uh, but it's I'll, the I'll, I'll price. look it up. I'll look it up real quick while yeah. we talk. Price shot up. <laughs> quite a lot this year really like went hundred folds or something but this if, year. We're, if we're talking about a more successful uh, Japanese coin would be Cardano right so Cardano I don't really consider it, it a Japanese cryptocurrency Mona uh, is uh, 15.25 yeah dollars. beginning of this year it was like less than one USD yeah so yeah, see it had a spike <laughs> right on. yeah it's pretty crazy, actually. Yeah, it, it had some volatility throughout 2016. It was dormant. Right. And now it just went all the way up, along with other altcoins. So maybe it can explain that. Yeah. Interesting. Ma- so, mm. yeah, please. So not not just Monocoin, but this applies to other altcoins in Japan, like especially those coins that are listed on CoinCheck, because mm-hmm. CoinCheck is the most popular um, altcoin exchange mm-hmm. um yeah they're, they're not an exchange really more like a broker mm-hmm. but uh yeah sometimes you know it's kind of interesting and kind of disappointing in the same same you know is that uh even if there's no use case or 
even you know there are some coins that nobody's developing anymore mm -hmm. <laughs> there are some coins and like that have like weird you know follower base and people just pump and dump basically and it's it happens quite a lot now in japan so a bunch of people just go behind some certain coins and like oh yeah this coin's great and like the price is going up for sure or something yeah. right they start pumping and if enough people kind of fall for it or believe in it and the press actually goes up <laughs> yeah and uh, do you think it's like elaborate elaborate like yeah a, definitely the, definitely like somebody's behind it like somebody's behind it yeah and it's quite common now in japan and any like scandals uh really related to that like uh anybody got arrested for doing so or is it on a small scale so nobody deals with that uh, the thing is there's no regulations for crypto and no rules for insider trading and mm -hmm. others right that's that's a big issue for cryptocurrency trading in general or ico as well in my opinion mm -hmm. so no nobody's doing anything but it's been Speaking quite of bad which coinbase onboarding bitcoin cash bitcoin cash yeah, yeah oh yeah 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 yeah. coinbase yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. I mean, nobody really talks about it, but it's quite common. Like, yeah. I'm not surprised if Coinbase employees are, you know, actually so allegedly, behind insider allegedly. training. Uh, allegedly, yeah. right? I don't know about the truth, but I know for a fact there are some people who are just pumping and dumping some altcoins in Japan and, you know, so yeah, it happens because yeah. there's no rules. And with regards to the exchanges themselves, any regulations that follow them? Like, uh, uh, what's what's the process? I mean, if I, if I'm not wrong, like a week ago there were three new exchanges listed uh, by the uh, Japanese regulator. What what are the, the rules? Of, that yeah. The no, not the process of of enlisting an exchange, but mm -hmm. what what regulations uh, are there for for an exchange? Obviously, KYC process. Oh, right? right, right. KYC, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of the trading, any special regulations? Um, as far as you know, there's not much regulation outside KYC for users. Mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of small and like many requirements for exchanges, which I know is kind of burdensome for, you know, local exchanges. It's kind of costly to get a license in Japan and run a cryptocurrency exchange now probably cost more than one million dollars just to be just to be compliant and get a license yeah um, then again once you do that you're basically printing money right the amount of volume that goes that's through true. them that's true you take a small fee and right. you, you don't really need to, to have that much of a staff right I mean uh, no you um, after regulation, a lot of most exchanges that I know in Japan uh, hire more people for customer support. Mm -hmm. uh, the regulation requires um, having certain stuff for like uh, KYC process and stuff like that. So the exchanges in Japan are getting actually bigger and bigger and they're making a lot of money as well because yeah. the sheer volume for speculation in Japan is just amazing. It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. especially starting this year so yeah they're making a lot of money actually <laughs> yeah so going back to cardano right um it's number seven right now on coin, right. coin market cap mm -hmm. uh let's see how much is it worth it's almost uh half a dollar right the price is almost half right. a dollar and it went up quite significantly mm -hmm. uh during the the last week or even the last month Right. right. It, it showed some really impressive spike uh, since the uh, end of November. Right. Uh, going up from, let's say, something like three cents to, as we said, like 50 cents right now. Um, why? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because there's there's like a, if you if you follow the um, the technical analysis uh, right. on, on online and if you read the um, the crypto news, so much hype about Cardano. It's been referred to as the uh, Japanese Ethereum, and people are mm -hmm. claiming that uh, it has a unique technology that allows it uh, to do something that other coins um, are lacking. So right. Your um, opinion. 
Sure. So Cardano,、uh, like I said, I don't really consider it a Japanese Ethereum or Japanese crypto, really.、Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. What, what do you know about Cardano outside that some people are like, really, you know, like so excited or like, you know, like, oh, the Cardano is amazing. It's going to be the next Ethereum or something. What, what do you know about Cardano? The answer is nobody、okay. really knows,、yeah. right? But it's suddenly like number seven, seven or yeah. yeah, ranked seventh or eighth or whatever. Yeah. And as far as I know, they have barely a wallet and there's no applications or no services on top of it, right? And not many people outside Japan know, but、um, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but、uh, they have some. Uh, it's, not even, it's not really a problem, but they have some questionable、uh, ICO practice, I would say.、Yeah. They sold their coins to only Japanese, which is kind of weird, right?、Yeah. Um, and to those who don't really understand、uh, technology, or, you know,、uh, they were selling those coins to people who just ba- basically noobs, right?、Mm-hmm. Claiming that this is going to be great. And it ended up the price is going up, so I guess they were right in a way.、Yeah. But a lot of Japanese people questioned how they、uh, marketed their ICO and their coin.、Mm-hmm. And after the ICO, there was、mm, not much going on for like two years. And this year, finally, they released something.、Yeah. Something, but I don't know, you know if there's any substance to it. I, didn't, I don't really look into it too much, so I cannot really say for sure.、Mm-hmm. But if Some people are, you know, kind of pumping certain coins, not just Cardano, I guess.、Yeah. I would question that is there any substance to it? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. and you know, it's the same for、uh, other cryptocurrencies, even for those among top 10. Yeah. And like I said, if、Iota、some people, for instance, Iota is a great example. So、yeah. a lot of people, technical people, question the validity of their claims and, like, you know, I think the same thing can be said about Cardano and other coins as well. What do you think about the Yoda if you mention it?、Uh, that's a good that's question. For, I... for, for, for those of you who don't know, Yoda、right. partnered with Microsoft some, some two weeks ago.、Uh, the, uh, is, they announced it. Is it true? Okay, so、right. is it true or not?、Right. It's, it's a good question. <laughs> they have some sort of a cooperation with Microsoft、right. along with、uh, some 20 other firms, mostly、right. technology firms. Um, the, you know, the legal definition, whether it's a partnership, a full partnership,、mm. or you know, just a, some collaboration, is still a question. Right.、Um, there was some uh, tweet uh,、um, you know, dispute between, right, 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 right. Uh, between them and, the, and the, one of the media outlets.、Uh, bottom line is、um, IOTA is supposed to be the IoT coin, right? right. To, to, to provide services to the IoT、uh, technology. Um, and ever since they、uh, announced、uh, they are teaming up with、uh, Microsoft, their、uh, price has just spiked. Right.、Uh, at some point, I think they were number four. Right.、Um, yeah. So, your humble opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of difficult to, you know, kind of bat mouth on some coins because they are no, not, no, not really bat mouthing. Like, you know. First of all, people made, made a lot of money from, from that spike, and people who, are, who,、right. who don't huddle now, maybe、right. they, you know, they, they made a lot of money, and those who huddle will probably make more money if it goes up. You know, nobody、right. knows. So it really depends on which perspective you're speaking from. If it's about investment, maybe you should have invested in IOTA or Cardano or whatever.、Yeah. But my question is that, you know, let's say about IOTA, I actually tried to use IOTA. Uh, a few months ago, just to kind of you know, experiment with it、mm-hmm. and try to use their wallet. It didn't work for me, at、okay. least. And I don't know about now, but a lot of people still claim their wallet is not very functional and、um, their blockchain kind of. Do they have a unique wallet or you can. I don't even know. I mean, I, I understand their DAG concept is kind of noble and interesting,、mm-hmm. but、uh, I did a. Interview on kind of IOTA community member in Japan, and he was very honest, and I really appreciated it. But the, the conclusion, I impression I got was、yeah. that a lot of it is still 
very experimental or very centralized um, and it has a long long way to go in terms of you know becoming functional and decentralized yeah. as they claim it's not going to be fully decentralized right because it's not really blockchain technology it's just a, it's a different technology of, of right of some transactions uh, right verifying the others and uh, it's a little bit different from what we know with other coins Right. I mean, being different is fine, and it doesn't have to be a blockchain to be successful, I guess. Yeah. But no, what, they're, what they're claiming and what it is now is completely, I guess, it's off, yeah, right? Yeah, because one of the, the claims of the opponents uh, is saying it's not really blockchain. It's not decentralized, so it doesn't have the, you know, the, the ro romantic uh, right. atmosphere to go along with the, with the cryptocurrency. Yeah, well, I mean, I kind of disagree with that. You know, it doesn't have to be a blockchain to be decentralized network. But in terms of talking about IOTA, I still have a lot of questions about if it's really decentralized as they claim or if it's even possible, you know, technologically. I mean, yeah. not that technical to kind of refute their argument, mm -hmm. but from what I understand and, what, you know, the, based on the interview I did with uh, some insiders, uh, so far, it's not very decentralized. Mm -hmm. uh, Their the wallet is not very functional. Um, hmm. There's a lot of big claims. Mm -hmm. But the question is, is there any substance to it? Can you use it for something? And that applies to every other, any other cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And the answer is to a lot of crypto is no. <laughs> but again, if you kind of pump some coins, the price will go up. So that's the definitely. problem. That's, 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 definitely that's the issue, in my sure. opinion. Um, if we're speaking about applicable coins and practical coins, uh, mm. Ripple is being used now. Um, it was used uh, some week ago uh, for transferring money between Japan and South Korea. Right, right. There was an experiment. Now uh, I read that the, there is another experiment coming up. Um, obviously, Ripple also saw some nice uh, growth in its price. But um, putting the speculative uh, aspect uh, aside for a minute, what uh, can you tell me about uh, the infrastructure of transferring money via Ripple in that part of the world, in Japan? I think Ripple's is more of a, I consider it a fintech company. Mm -hmm. And design-wise, it's not really a blockchain, right? They have admitted themselves, I guess. And But again, it doesn't have to be a blockchain to be useful, yeah. right? Uh, and they're just trying to make the international payment more efficient, faster, cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's fine, but it's which is a quite noble cause, right? I mean, uh, right, you know, considering the the alternatives right now. Right, but there's a lot of confusion or mix up between like Bitcoin, which is trying to be a decentralized cryptocurrency, and XRP, mm -hmm. which is um, just a bridge currency for mm -hmm. international payment. It doesn't really have to be decentralized in a way. So yeah. they serve different purposes. But they're completely different things. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, Bitcoiners in Japan, or there's a lot of Ripple fans in Japan. Yeah. Um, people who hold a lot of XRP or, you know, excited, you know, kind of, you know, support Ripple, ba mm -hmm. basically. Uh, Bitcoiners and Ripplers in Japan don't get along. Oh, <laughs> obviously. Right. For those of you who don't know, uh, Ripple is backed uh, to some extent by banks and by right. institutional bodies, right? So uh, that takes take, takes away a little bit of, uh, of the um, uh, purpose of being decentralized and right. moving away from banks and from all the, you know, the old foundations, right? right? So... Yeah, so Bitcoiners and Ripplers don't get along, but I think they serve different purposes. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have a strong opinion for or against Ripple or XRP in general. Mm -hmm. But if, you know, bank transfers or international payments become more efficient, that's great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's not really in the core. Right? Yeah, that's not really why I was so involved in bitcoin or excited about this whole thing mm -hmm. so yeah so moving away from japan a little bit and, and right. speaking more in general um what in your opinion are the most interesting coins to to follow both uh in terms of the technology and the, the substance as you as you mm. put it and also as an asset as a, as a as investment a trading, yeah. uh, investment channel right 
Um, interesting coins. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, cryptocurrencies that are focused on uh, privacy. Mm -hmm. A lot of Bitcoiners are fans of you know an anonymous coins, but yeah. it's very important for Bitcoin to be successful as a currency as well, because right now uh, all the transactions are transparent, meaning you know anybody can trace any transactions, mm -hmm. right? And there's a, actually a lot of companies who are using that feature to catch bad guys, which is good. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they can actually trace other good people's, yeah. you know, what they're spending on and kind of analyze. And that could be dangerous in some way. Yeah. I mean, not, you, not you mention, don't want anybody else to know what you're buying, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's that's only uh, speaking of uh, commercial uses. Like, right. Th think of the, 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 the implications that can be for governments and, right. or terrorist organizations and right. etc. Right, right. So it, Bitcoin is actually not very good for um, money laundering. Mm -hmm. there, there is some research about it as well, actually. So be, because it's so transparent yeah. and it's traceable right and some people actually get caught because of that but uh if bitcoin needs if bitcoins to become more like more like a currency actual currency like a cash yeah uh it has to be more you should be able to choose the level of uh privacy right now everything is you know open yeah uh you can actually use it use that transparency for different applications which is kind of interesting in my opinion but uh yeah users should be able to use the different levels of privacy and that's important so that's why i think anonymous coins are important in terms of technology Exam, right uh zcash zcash is one thing yeah uh, uh zero knowledge proof zk snark actually ethereum recently adopted that technology right mm -hmm. so a lot of the technology behind those uh you know private focused currencies are actually you know uh, getting adopted by bitcoin or ethereum which is a good thing in my opinion so in terms of technology i'm i'm interested in those mm -hmm. uh, anything else yes um what do you, speaking of of you know bitcoin becoming uh, some sort of cash mm. do you think that it's even possible like you know every, <laughs> everyone's talking about the this dilemma or you know the, the paradox that that basically bitcoin is is attractive so it becomes volatile it's right. volatile so it becomes, mm. becomes attractive and if you want a currency as we uh, spoke earlier that you can you know pay uh, with in a store and and get a refund and etc you need it to be stable right um so do you think it's ever going to happen maybe with some other mm. coin maybe maybe not <laughs> Nobody knows, uh, but I think eventually, uh, when there's more liquidity, the price will be more stable. Mm -hmm. But let's say it just stays volatile, as volatile yeah. as it is, and maybe it's very difficult to use as cash because the you know value is so uh, you know volatile. Yeah. But it doesn't really mean it's not useful uh, because Bitcoin is a incentive mechanism for miners. So even if it's volatile, as long as there's incentive to keep mining, miners will mine to secure the network. Mm -hmm. And you can use Bitcoin not just as a currency, but uh, infrastructure for different applications. Maybe Ethereum makes uh, is an easier example uh, because a lot of applications are on top of Ethereum, right? Mm -hmm. Say like Ether, uh, the currency for the ethereum network mm -hmm. even if it even if it's volatile people can steal applications on top of ethereum right mm -hmm. so currency is you, not you're the referring only to the crypto kitties or something yeah crypto kitties yeah, is yeah. for example it's just one example but eventually there will be many more uh, unique applications using on top of the bitcoin blockchain or ethereum blockchain or maybe others so the use as a currency is Im important, definitely. But for me, uh, as long as it serves as the incentive mechanism for miners to secure the network, uh, I think the network will be useful for something at least. Mm -hmm. So 
So you're saying that it, it's not necessarily that you can go and buy a pack of cigarettes or, or cucumbers right. using that money, but there are other uses that can be also right. relevant. Yeah, like, for example, digital identity is one example, notarization. I mean, and there are some applications I cannot even think of right now. So yeah. I'm very excited about that, not just as a currency where I can use to buy, you know, a cucumber or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so let's conclude the conversation with, you know, a more general question. Uh, 2017 was yeah. definitely the year of crypto. The year of ICOs and uh, oh yeah yeah <laughs> don't 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 get me started about yeah, ICOs yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a whole different topic yeah okay um, sure what do you think is gonna happen to, in 2018 uh, oh, man. it can be um you know we, let's split this question into two what do you think gonna happen in in Japan right and in the crypto world right in 2018 yeah you know I made predictions in the beginning of 2017 Sorry for the corny question right? yeah in 2017 right and. I did some like price prediction just for fun and yeah. some other like, you know, this will happen like side chain or whatever, something I, I was so wrong. And so <laughs> even if I make a prediction about 2018, it'll be very wrong probably. But uh, let me think. I mean, in 20, beginning of 2017, my price target around the end of this year was mm -hmm. like 2000 US dollars or yeah. something, right? At the time, it sounded kind of like, oh, he's, he's too, you know, <laughs> he's pumping the price or something, right? Yeah. But what's but the now, price now? It's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Even though it dipped a little bit, but... Right. You cannot really predict that. But in 2018, eh, it's very difficult. Um, I think ICO hype will end in kind of a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very critical of ICOs in general, actually, but... Uh, in 2017, we saw a lot of like ICOs, which raised a crazy lot of you know money, millions yeah. and millions of dollars. Uh, but I feel like the hype is you know. I'm what not, what not, if you came from from here, from Israel, Bancor and others? Right. Uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna interview those guys actually. So yeah. I'm kind of excited to kind of hear their story. But uh, uh, in 2018, the ICO hype will, will be dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and people kind of realize, oh, we've, you know, invested like millions of dollars for these projects, but what have they produced so far? Mm -hmm. They have to ask that question eventually. Uh, some ICOs will start kind of blowing up like uh, Tezos, right? Yeah. There, there are many other projects like from the inside, it's not even functional. Mm -hmm. People are not building anything anymore, but yeah. nobody knows yet, right? It'll yeah. be some of it will be kind of revealed in 2018. That's one of my predictions. Then we'll go to a long session of uh, lawsuits and uh, right, De suits. definitely, definitely. Like where with Tezos. Right, and it, sooner or later, I think the ICO sphere needs to be regulated, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Or it doesn't have to be regulated, but then that means a lot of uh, newbies will kind of getting <laughs> exploited or get you know yeah. get hurt. <laughs> yeah. I don't invest in ICOs because I know how it works and how there are a lot of issues with them. But it will probably mature, right? I mean, it, yeah, it maybe be, it will be more uh, used for for you know real firms with substance than right. uh, with some startups that are you know Hope only have an idea. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. yeah. For for the sake of all of us, right? Okay, uh, Koji. Well, let me let me think. Maybe. Let me try to make one or two more predictions, I guess. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. That's, that's what, what the, do you think? What do you think, though? That's Michael? the you know that's that's the advantage of, of doing a podcast, right? You have a lot of time <laughs> on our hands, <laughs> right? Um, what do I think? I, I, I think I'm I'm quite you know interested in seeing how big corporations will enter this right. world uh, because um, you saw I think that what we saw in 2017 is the skepticism mm -hmm. um, around cryptocurrencies is something that is fading away, right? right? The fo famous, uh, you know, uh, Jamie Dimon uh, oh, yeah. quote. Um, you know, I, I think we're going to see it to, to a larger extent in 2018. Uh, more and more companies or even governments starting to, to talk about it. You oh, know? yeah. Uh, something that uh, caught the news um, a week ago. Our prime minister uh, was talking about uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, the South Korean Prime Minister is is, is very yeah yeah is, right. is, is, is very interested in it and very cautious about it. Um, 
the, the, the Trump administration talking about it with regards mm. to taxation. So I think it's going to be interesting. I think that um, those corporations and governments will try to curb this growth or at least to use it for their own good, right, for taxation mm. purposes um, or, you know, other ways to, to, to profit from it or to control it, right? Mm. So that's quite uh, alarming and that's something that uh, we need to watch. Um, I don't know if you're going to meet with the guys from the Bitcoin embassy in Israel. Mm, not yet. No? No. They have... Um, they have quite a few problems with the authorities here in terms of them wanting to uh, tax uh, Bitcoin transactions. Okay, tax um, Bitcoin transactions. Yes, interesting. Yes, yes, interesting, uh, and very sad. I would say. <laughs> um, so that's something that we should, uh, you know, on the on the downside. That's right. something that uh, I think uh, will be um, a part of 2018. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking of taxes, let me explain about cryptocurrency taxes on cryptocurrency in japan real quick yeah we, please, we please. haven't talked about it right I, yeah. I think the listeners will will be very interested in that Definitely. the tax rate in japan for cryptocurrency trading is very very high guess how much they take if you make more than like hundred thousand dollars for example just before we 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 move to that um, what do you mean trading like if, oh. if we do a transaction how do they even know that we did a transaction right so it's not on-chain transactions mm -hmm. it's uh trading on exchanges okay yeah okay so trading on an exchange um i don't know 10 <laughs> percent. okay good guess the answer is if you make more than uh hundred thousand us dollars for uh, capital gain, mm -hmm. they take basically 55%. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. And a lot Having of people... Having said that, not, yeah. not, not too many people make so much money on the, on, on the exchanges, right? They Actually, a lot of people do. That's really? the problem. Really? So this year, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, they saw like 10 folds or some are even like 100 folds increase in you know prices, right? Mm -hmm. So... It sounds really crazy, but it's kind of normal for those Japanese cryptocurrency traders to make more than a million dollars worth, you know, of yen or Bitcoin or some others, right? Yeah. So a lot of people are having this issue of like, oh yeah, I'm getting like 55% tax, you know, cut, yeah. and what do I do about it kind of thing. So it's a big issue for traders in Japan now. Um, so... About the tax rate is so high is just one big issue. Mm -hmm. Another thing is uh, we talked about Bitcoin payment a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but the tax office said in their public comment, uh, Bitcoin payment is also a taxable event. So meaning mm -hmm. like if you buy one Bitcoin for $1,000 mm -hmm. and the price goes tenfold, for example, now it's $10,000, right? So you have like uh, 9000 dollars worth of capital gain like yeah. unrealized gain yeah. right and if you buy a car using that bitcoin for example uh you have to report that that you know you use it's kind of like a trading right yeah. you convert it to so, yen. so they don't refer to that as a currency but whether as a as a security right because if you would buy something and you would get a thousand dollars nobody would care that this thousand dollars spiked uh, right right exactly exactly so they don't consider it a currency, so you have to actually report for Bitcoin purchases, making Bitcoin payment much, much more difficult, mm -hmm. right? Because every time you make a Bitcoin purchase, technically you have to report it to the, ta to the tax authority. And knowing, knowing Japan, uh, probably um, that is not nothing to, uh, to play with, right? I mean, you, you, you're not going to go below the radar, right? Well, I mean, there, there are... Some people who always, you know, do stuff like that, but a lot of people, like generally, like good people, yeah. they don't want to do that, right? Yeah. So what do they do? Maybe they stop using bitcoins because they, or they just convert it to yen first and using that yen mm -hmm. buy whatever they want. So it doesn't really make sense to use bitcoin as a payment method anymore because of the how the tax works in Japan. Wow, so that's very interesting. And is there any like a uh, legislative initiative to change that? Like any mm. politicians that are you know more innovative that right. uh, want to change that? I think there are some people who are behind, you know working on that, but I don't know any particular person. But mm. I think it's a big issue, and Bitcoin as a payment 
will be very, very difficult because of that reason. They should change it. They should probably have a certain limit. Say, for example, like below 1,000 US dollar worth of purchase mm -hmm. uh, tax exempt or something like that, right? Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense to use Bitcoin as a payment. Yeah, method. definitely. If they're going to test yeah. it that way. Or, or people keep using under the radar and nobody cares because yeah. it's very difficult to track that as well, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's technically like against the law, but nobody cares, including the authorities. So maybe that's what's going to happen. Yeah, probably they count on people to, to actually come and report and not, you know, hide this. Right. But if you buy a car, for example, technically you can buy a car now in Japan yeah. using Bitcoin. Yeah. But I don't know if many people do that because of the tax. <laughs> because, because you probably got that Bitcoin from, from somebody, and right. then, then it's going to be taxed, right? When you buy a car, you will have to pay a tax for, 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 the, for the Bitcoins too. For Bitcoin as well, right. Yeah. Right. I see. It doesn't really make sense. You then maybe you should just change it to yen and just buy with your credit card that's or something. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's again, you know, tying the the Bitcoin to to the yen and and then just, you know, taking out all the all the uh, yen. You know, no, t taking out all the features that are are supposed to make Bitcoin free and right. not related to any currency. Right. That's true. I mean, technically you can still use Bitcoin, but because of how the kind of old system defines Bitcoin, making certain use cases, you know, impractical. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of disappointing and kind of interesting, but I think I think it needs to be changed. But yeah. it's it's not final. They made a public comment, but it's uh, it's not, it's just a comment, public comment. They might change it in the future, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's hope that 2018 will bring some Yeah, okay. Some new yeah, that's that's a prediction, I guess. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. That's, that's more hopeful. Uh, yeah. More hopeful speaking. Right. So Koji, thank you so much. Uh it was great having you here. Mm -hmm. Um would you like to say something that it's your chance to uh, oh, you know <laughs> promote myself? To promote yourself. A uh, bit. Where where can we uh, read the things that right. you're writing? Um, right. So about my work, maybe your 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 blogs. Right, right, right. About my work, you can go to kojihigashi.info. Uh, hopefully, you can you know put yeah. a link in the description yeah. or something. Uh, yeah, that's my portfolio page. I do a lot of writing. Uh, I create videos. Uh, some others. I've been heavily involved in the field of token economy using original user-generated tokens to do different things. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm very active in this space. So if you want to know more about Japan or some other interesting projects, applications, uh, definitely follow me. I also write some English articles on my Medium, so Medium mm -hmm. account. So definitely check that out. So I guess that's it. Yeah, so, and you're also on Twitter. I'm also, I'm very active on Twitter as well. But I, most of my tweets are in Japanese, unfortunately. Oh. So. Okay, that's why I have Google Translate. Right. <laughs> so. so thank you, Koji. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you.